Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelly. I am so glad you guys are here. Today, I have a little bit of a Beauty Bay haul. This is the second time I've hauled from Beauty Bay. These are things that I purchased with my own money, things that I just got distracted by and started adding to cart. You know how it goes. Throw that lip gloss away. That one hurts. Hey, so this is, this is a, a big box of stuff. I got a little bit of everything in here. I've got some some skincare, some hair care, some makeup, and I thought I would share, share with you guys my goodies. And then there's a couple things I kind of want to actually get on my face. So we're going to do a lot of this talking without anything at all first. And we're going to go from there. You guys are okay with that, right? Okay. First thing in here. Uh, and now I've used this before. This is the Shea Moisture Strengthen and Restore Leave-In Conditioner. I haven't used this in a long time. I mean, it's got a little bit of a scent. It's Jamaican Black Castor Oil. And this is their bonus size. I like deep conditioners. This says it's a leave-in, so I'm gonna, I, I, I'll keep this in my shower and we'll come back and see like how it does. I typically have dry, coarse, almost like wiry hair that I have to work really hard <laughs> to keep the oils in it and keep it moisturized. Probably been about 10 years. Sorry, my eyes are watering from the stuff that I put on it before I started filming. Um, but it's been about 10 years since I got fully into the whole Shea Moisture thing. Might even been longer than that. I, I know that I tried them in like 2012. So it's, it's been a minute. Yeah, it's been like 10 years. It's been like 10 years since I've probably done all the shampoos. And I don't remember being like super impressed by them. I really wanted to like them. Anyway, enough about that. So we're going to try the Shea Moisture. If I get all the way through it, you'll see me on my empties and then I'll have like an actual opinion on what it is. Uh, so a couple of these things are, some of these, a couple of things in here are things that I thought I would replenish, like this pharmacy. This is their Green Clean Melt Away, uh, Makeup Melt Away Cleansing Balm. I, I may have a backup of this already. I've tried other cleansing bombs. The pharmacy one is by far my favorite. Uh, and I started with some makeup on, so I'm not going to take this off again. We won't use that right now. And I need to save it. I need to not open it up anyway. So in, along the lines with the Melt Away stuff, this is the Beauty Bay brand. Um, this is the Cleansing Gel Probiotic and Avocado Rebalance. It's for rebalancing and refreshing skin all skin types. This is a super jelly. I'm kind of curious about this. I think, you know, normally when I do uh, a cleansing balm anyway, I'd end up doing a double cleanse. So you do the cleansing balm, which helps kind of breaks up the makeup a little bit and helps dissolve it. And then you, you know, actually have to wash it off your skin. Plastic container. It's, you know, pretty decent size. This is about my commitment level when it comes to skincare. Anything bigger than this, I'm going to be ready to get over with it. I'm low commitment when it comes to some things. It's like I'm constantly looking for like the, the holy grail, the stuff that I really love. Anyway, I've never tried the Beauty Bay skincare stuff. I do have some of the Beauty Bay products that I was really liked and they're very economical. I did pick up one of the Ordinary Serum Foundations. We're gonna, oh, I probably should have waited. You know what, I might have to take what I have on my face and we might have to try that. I'm gonna put that aside. I forgot that I'd gotten that. I did pick up some of this Revolution Skincare London Gold Hydrogel uh, Hydrating Eye Patches. Should we try some of these? I did put makeup on already, but I love eye patches. You guys, I'm like an eye patch addict. I put these on, Not maybe not these ones because I haven't tried these ones before, but I, I put them on when I'm doing my hair, just to kind of get like the extra little whatever going. So this kind of, this is kind of cute. It comes with like a little tweezery thing to, to get them out. Oh, okay. Oh, and they are, I mean, they're encased in, in gel and they're gold. So let me see if I can grab one. They're thick Ooh, and it's very slippery. It doesn't want to, okay. It doesn't, it's probably good to use them to separate out, but once you can get it out, maybe then just use your hands. So let's just go ahead and put these on. I'm going to have to redo my foundation, which is fine because, you know, I forgot that I actually bought a foundation. Let's try another one over here. So the gel on it is very, very jelly. This makes this want to kind of slide down a little bit here. Wow, those are huge. Wait, did I get too many? I did. Darn it. Does this one have two as well? I don't know that those... Oh yeah, this one has more. Okay, so they're thinner than than they look at. And now this one, maybe I have, oh my gosh, I am struggling with these, you guys. Wow. Oh, we're just going to have to leave this alone here. Oh my gosh, stop sliding down my face. I don't love the little tweezery things. They, that's ineffective. Okay, so don't use the tweezery thing. You grab too much. Now, I feel like this one has more than one. And then because it's thicker, it's like pulling down a little bit. But I couldn't separate them out without, I mean, I was poking a hole in them. My hair's attached to it. All right, so we're going to have to see how these ones go. Vegan, cruelty-free, fragrance-free, and this is from a Revolution London, which is, I believe, Makeup Revolution, right? I think that's the same brand. Now I feel like I've got, yeah, I've got it under my fingernails. That's gross. Okay, so yeah, this is totally sliding down my face. We're just going to leave it alone. We'll see how long it takes before it totally travels down my face. 
Jury's out on this one. Um, it does feel kind of tingly though. So it's obviously got some sort of products in there that are working. This is the worst of it, right down underneath here. That's where I get all my creepy, gross stuff. I bought these dermaplaners. I have dermaplaners and I don't really go through them all that much. This one says, it says, I'm made from plants. Oh my word, this is traveling down my face, you guys. This is a failed experiment here. I don't know anything about this brand. These ones are all kind of a dusty pink color. I've bought some ones off of Amazon before. And you know, you use it to kind of get off any peach fuzz or if you have to trim something up a little bit, stay. Oh, let's see, what else did I get here? I feel like I got a lot of skincare here. Um, I've got an overnight eye cream from Makeup Revolution. Again, Revolution Skincare London, which I think is Makeup Revolution. And then this is from Beauty Bay. This is their hydrating eye treatment. Let's, let's try this. This is driving me absolutely crazy. I don't know how I'm supposed to, how long you're supposed to leave this on, but it is literally sliding down my face. This one's staying up here. Okay, so we have an overnight eye cream and then we have a hydrating eye treatment. Let's try the hydrating eye treatment today and we'll leave the overnight cream for a later time. Um, I probably shouldn't even be trying any of this stuff. I do have Revolution Skincare London Vitamin C and a Revolution Skincare London Hyaluronic Acid and this is like all the way down to my cheek now. All right, apparently you have to use those when you can sit. <laughs> <laughs> not be moving around. Okay, I also picked up a hydrating gel mask. This is hyaluronic acid and algae. I've been feeling very dry lately, and I think when I went through and, and purchased all this stuff, I was having a hard time with my skin, feeling so parched and really starting to feel kind of like crocodile-like, alligator-like. I mean, I felt like I was really struggling with keeping it moisturized and, and hydrated. I since then changed the foundation and skincare, the, the base layers that I was using before. That was, that was not good. So you'll see those in my uh, declutter of foundations. Anyway, this hydrating gel mask, I thought this actually would be good, maybe moisture boost for the skin. I feel like we got some moisture boost things going on here. So vitamin C for brightening, overnighting hydrating mask, another hydrating gel mask, a super jelly cleanser, an overnight eye cream, my pharmacy melt away, love that stuff. Let's take this gel mask off, that was crazy. All right, I'm gonna grab a little makeup pad here and just kind of gently wipe off <laughs> what I had going on. I could use some, some micellar water, but I think I'm just gonna kind of gently buff this off my skin. A little bit of foundation and stuff going on before. We'll pretend it's not there anymore. I feel like I got most of that gel off along with most of my <laughs> foundation that I had before, which is perfectly fine because we're going to try this other stuff. So I'm going to go in with this uh, hydrating eye treatment. It says caffeine and peptides for brightening and moisturizing the under eye. So I really actually enjoyed, surprisingly so, the Beauty Bay eyeshadow palette that I got, the Wilderness one. This is what the eye cream looks like. And I also love caffeine eye creams. So that's kind of what prompted me to try this. And even after having that eye gel on, or that eye, what was it? That was Makeup Revolution 2, Red Revolution London. That gold um, eye patch. My skin doesn't feel, my under eyes don't feel irritated right now, which is nice. I was a little bit worried about that in all honesty, because at first it got a little tingly. So maybe those need to be on when you're supine, when you're laying on your back. Hydrating eye treatment with caffeine and peptides. I. This might actually be a, a steal. None of this stuff is super expensive. I'm shocked at how good, especially like the Booty, Beauty, Booty, the Beauty Bay brand is. I actually really like the prices of it. Okay, what else did I get? I got more, more stuff here. I got two different um, anti-acne type things. One of them again is, actually they're both from Revolution Skincare London. This one is a blemish salicylic acid blemish, uh, blemish touch-up st stick. I thought this might be kind of a good dupe-ish for, oh my gosh, it's huge. It's way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I thought this might be kind of good for, um, like to replace the e.l.f., very little if any scent. That's good. The e.l.f. acne sticks, I really like those and they're super cheap. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll try this. Occasionally a little spot here and there. And then this one I was actually super excited about. This is the Willow Bark Extract called Prevent uh, gentle blemish serum helps to prevent blemishes with naturally occurring salicylic acid and tea tree. So maybe it smells like tea tree oil. So the the thing with the willow bark that got my attention was I've used, I used this Hungarian brand before that had a willow bark serum and I got a, like a little tiny travel size and I used it. It took forever to get through it and I actually really liked it. I'm going to shake this up. I don't have like a ton of acne stuff spots going on right now, but I, I do have one little spot that I feel like it's been a little red and irritated. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on. This actually, I don't smell a ton of 
tea tree or anything on this. I felt like that the other gel that I had was almost like a brown color. So it was easy to see where you put it, but it was a thick gel and you kind of put it on and you had to let it dry. And that was kind of a pain, but not horrible. Okay. I also picked up some of these travel size of their spray essences. So one of them is a hyaluronic acid hydrating essence spray. One of them is a rose hip regenerating essence spray. And one of them is a super fruit replenishing essence spray. Might as well put some essence sprays on our face before we go in with the, the foundations. And I, I don't think I've ever tried anything Revolution skincare before. So there's three different ones. I figured we'd try all of them. One of them says hydrating, one of them's replenishing, and one of them's regenerating. I feel like I need to do the regenerating one first, huh? Hmm. Wow, this, this is the rosehip one. That smells delightful. What does it smell like? It almost smells like cucumbers or something. Some sort of, or melon? What does it smell like? It smells like something. Not sure. Okay, let's try the hyaluronic um, hydrating essence spray next. It's very refreshing. Okay. Ooh, okay. Okay, these are all scented, but they smell clean and fresh. That one seemed like it was a little more aggressive. I don't know why they would be different different sprays. Okay. Last one is a super fruit replenishing essence spray. I feel like I need to dry this off a little bit. Do I have a fan? <clears throat> Oh, please. We'll let this dry before. Do you guys ever do like spray primers or spray essences and stuff? I When I do like toners, I like, a, I don't mind a spray toner because I don't really use them for exfoliation. Uh, sometimes I'll just sprinkle them in my hands and then press them onto my skin. All right. Mostly dry. All right. Let's try this other one. This is the super fruit one. All right. So they all smell similar, but slightly different. I don't find any one of them horrifying or something that I would steer you guys clear from. Now, I'm normally somebody who needs a pretty hefty dose of moisturizer, usually immediately after I wash my skin. Otherwise, I'm just in, in bad shape. But we're going to leave this as it is and not apply any more moisturizer on top. And let's just see what it does. This might be either really good or horribly wrong. All right. Skin feels uh, dewy, refreshed, mostly dry right now. Okay. I did pick up an ordinary uh, serum foundation. I love serum foundations. This one says it's light coverage. I got it in shade. It doesn't say on the box. I don't think there's a 15, but I think that's for SPF. Now I do like the ordinary products. This, this container reminds me a little bit of Fo Foera. Yeah. Foera, I think, but this is very liquidy. All right. This is in shade 2.0 N light medium, which is pretty much what I go for when I'm looking for a foundation. So I'm going to put a little bit of this. Oh yeah, that might actually work. Maybe even a little light. We'll just see how it buffs in. Love a lightweight serum foundation. And I, one of the things I like about it is I can take it up all the way under my eyes. I use too much. I think I used half a pump and it sh we'll see. This might be far too much. I don't think so because it's very liquidy. It's almost like the consistency of the elf serum foundation. Okay. That actually feels pretty good. Yeah, it's maybe a little light. We might have to bronze it up a little bit here. Good thing is, is I'm pretty sure I got something that I can use. Yeah, I'm not upset by this. I, and again, I like serum foundations. This one feels like a lighter consistency. Maybe not as oily as... What was that one? Was it, it wasn't Ilya. Maybe it was Ilya that was horrible. That's in my, I think it's in my declutter too. I could be wrong on the brand, but there was one that was super, Kosas. Kosas has a super oily, like tinted skincare serum-y type thing. Okay. So it's a little lighter than maybe what I needed it to do. But when I look in the mirror, I actually don't mind the color of it. I have it on my lips though. It doesn't taste bad and it is light. It says that it's buildable, right? It says light coverage, light medium. Yeah. 2.0. It was on the front of the box. I just wasn't looking in the right place. So yeah, I don't mind that. Maybe a little light, but not horrible. And I'm just building it up a little bit where I have that sun damage just for, just for fun. I do need a little bit on the bridge of my nose. That's where I wear my glasses. I've been wearing glasses all week. And then let's just end a little bit here. <clears throat> they have a really, really great caffeine under eye serum. Actually really like that. Does this have not have a lid on it? Like I feel like it needs a cap, but I don't, I don't see that I have caps. I don't think that this is sitting weird on my skin. No, it does. It lo just looks like skin. Imperfections and all. I see it. All right. We're good. We're good with that foundation. Yeah. I like that. I'll use that. Okay. I do have an eye base. Shall we try that one? This one is, does it have a shade or anything on it? It says eye base, beauty bay. This is their beauty bay brand uh, by the beauty obsessed. 
Uh, sometimes these have shades on them, but it's hard for me to see. So this looks like it might have like a doe foot applicator. It does, little little one. Oh yeah, this is so this is a little tinted, which leads me to believe that I'm gonna get some coverage off of it. Oh yeah, you know I've been using so many eyelid primers that are trans lucent. It's nice to use one that actually has a little bit of coverage on it. Should I scoot you guys in a little bit? I feel like you're too far away. Okay, got you guys a little bit in closer. I feel, no, it's okay. I was gonna say maybe I'm a little washed out, but maybe it's not too bad. All right, that eyelid primer, that's, that's a win for me. I am looking a little washed out, huh? I need to get some color onto this flat surface here, but I can tell you that the skin does actually look really good. It, do, it doesn't feel mask-like. It doesn't feel too heavy. Lip liner. This is a Beauty Bay lip liner in the shade. This is a Beauty Bay lip liner in the shade Heather. Just try this on here for size. Now I have gotten kits of Beauty Bay liners I'm in my other haul and I think I got two kits of eyeliners and some lip liners and I can tell you this actually went on pretty well. It's not so creamy that you feel like you're, it's not like the, the ColourPop gel liners where you feel like you press them into your you know, your skin or your lips and you end up going through them so quickly because they're so soft. This doesn't feel like that. Doing a little overlining just for fun. Okay, I did pick up a Beauty Bay lipstick too. This one is a matte lipstick by Beauty Bay. And this one is probably darker than I needed it to be. This one's called Pinch. Ooh, pretty. No, not darker than I needed it to be. And I have bought kits of Beauty Bay uh, lipsticks in the past, like little four packs and they feel great. I don't have any issue with that at all. Mm, is it a little too light? Well, we need to doctor up the, the rest of the complexion here and see, but that's kind of fun. Yeah, that's good to kind of throw in the purse and have it be available in case you need it. Okay, speaking of complexion. So I have had this Makeup Revolution, Soph X Revolution, this, this uh, collaboration. I think it's Soph Does Life, I believe, is the the YouTuber cr content creator collaborator that made it. Soph X, does it say which one it is? No. So I know that she's done a couple different ones. Uh, she did one, I think like six or seven months ago, maybe eight months ago by the time this video goes up. This just seems like just a great everyday wearable palette. So there's like 24 shades in here and half are mattes and half are shimmers, but it feels very shimmer heavy. I don't need quite as many shimmers as it came in here, but anyway, the reason I'm bringing this one up is I've had it for a long time and I don't really use it. I don't really use a lot of Makeup Revolution brand. Anyway, I picked this up because I thought this was the same content creator and this actually, this Rox, a Roxy, Roxaurus, not the same one at all. There's a Soph and a Roxy and they're they're not the same people. But if you look at the palettes, don't those palettes look really, really similar? Please forgive me. I thought it was the same content creator until I actually saw it. I'm like, wait, Soph, Rox, that's not the same person. But this one is a uh, highlight and contour palette. And I don't think I have, aside from the box, that's what the palette itself looks like. Giving me a little bit of Natasha Denona glam face palette vibes, right? And then this is the actual palette itself. Basically contours and highlights, kind of what you expect. Let's go ahead and put some of this on the face and see what it looks like. I have a brush here that I need to make sure I don't have anything on it. And I'm gonna go in with this kind of cool matte neutral contour shade here. Yeah, it's they've split it half and half. You got contour on one side and highlight on the other. So let's just try that for shade. Okay, that that works. I feel bad because I don't, I know I've seen Roxaurus before, but she's not somebody I regularly watch. So I think she's a London based or a UK based YouTuber, probably a 20 something. All right, that worked well. I, that was a good choice in, in colors. Let's put a little bit on the nose here. Saw a headline recently and I didn't actually read the article, but it was talking about how Bobby, how Bobby Brown does not do what he nose con contouring. All right, let's factor this up too, shall we? All right. I think I, I think as far as a contour goes, yeah, I like that. It's, you know, I didn't go overboard. At least I don't feel like I did, which is a nice change for me. Okay. Um, but this doesn't really have a blush in it, but I'm going to go ahead and use bronzer as kind of a blush. This is the more shimmery highlighter looking one, but it is, um, it's too dark for me as a highlighter. So we're just going to use it as kind of a warm tone blush. I'm trying to keep it off of my texture, but I am getting a little bit of, getting a little bit of texture here. So I think what I would do, yeah, I don't really care for that as blush. It's too, it's, there's too much gold and it's picking up texture and it's giving me texture in places I don't really want it. So I'm going to take this, um, 
I'm gonna actually mix these two together. So there's one that's a little bit more of a red color and then one that's kind of a tan and we're just gonna tap it over the top and see if we can't tone down just a little bit of that. But it did tone down some of that texture that was coming through, which is which is good. All right, there's this uh, another like a light pink color in here. I'm gonna probably regret this. I'm gonna grab this lighter pink one. I don't know why it's kind of like calling to me. Probably a little too pink. I'm not usually one to go a little crazy with the highlighter, but apparently we're going crazy with the highlighter today. Yeah, that that pink gives me too much of a gray cast. That was not that was not a good choice. All right, taking my foundation brush and it's still dry, which is nice because that means that that uh, serum foundation ended up going more on my skin and less on my brush. Bodes well when you're <laughs> not trying to burn through uh, serum foundations for fun. I might have to do a different blush, but let's move on and see what else we, we got in here. Picked up this palette. This is the Plush palette from Sample Beauty. It says, color outside the lines. I think this is a rainbow palette if I remember correctly. And I loved the Beauty Bay brand so much. Yeah, that's, there is a whole row or mostly, well, there's, yeah. <laughs> These two rows themselves can be a little intimidating if you're not used to color, but if you cover that up, cover up those, yeah, that's that's totally wearable. So more than half the shades look like they're totally wearable. I feel like these maybe are not quite as, I'm just looking to see if it's swatched and it's not. Uh, these don't seem like they're maybe quite as big as the Beauty Bay brand palette itself, like the Wilderness or the Nudes or any of those. Let's just try, let's just try a look, shall we? Do, do I want to go crazy with color? Hmm, what am I feeling right now? There's a lot of mattes in here. There's only six shimmers in here, which I love. Only six shimmers and 24 shadows. That's thrilling to me. You do have a black, you have a light kind of like bone shade. You've got this really kind of fun antique color right here. Oh, creamy. That's creamy and very pretty. Oh yeah, I like that. It's like a duochrome kind of yellow green shift. Fun. I'm going to start with this kind of bone shade right here called Dainty. And I'm going to put this up underneath my eyebrow and barely discernible on my lid, which is kind of what I expected it to be. This also would be a great color to take all the way down here in case you have any discoloration. Yeah, it just minimized all that discoloration. I love that. I'm taking it all the way down here. Woo! Love that. Okay, that's a win. Absolute win on that shade if you've got the kind of darker, you know what? I'm gonna take it all the way over the bridge of my nose too. Let's cancel all that out. It's got like a very, very subtle, I'm not gonna call it a peach shift to it, but it's it's a little bit discernible. Yeah, I like that. Okay, moving on. That was unexpectedly pleasant. Um, Let's take the shade Delicate, which we're, we're gonna stick on this row, I think, for a while here. But this is kind of a light peachy shade here. I'm gonna use this just on my brow bone, or that orbital socket bone. It's gonna be the beginning of my transition here. Okay, that one's feeling a little chalky maybe, but I think it might be the color more than anything. I'm gonna keep moving on. It's not horrible. It's just not a shade that I would constantly always use. But the first one was called Dainty, the second one was Delicate, this one's called Elite, and I feel do I want a smaller brush? No, I'm gonna stick with the same brush. Okay, so this one is called Elite and it's kind of like a brick red burgundy shade. I didn't know anything about this palette. I haven't seen anybody's reviews on it. And okay, that's coming across as a little bit more plummy than I thought it would, which is not horrible, but it's just not really what I thought it was gonna be. Um, but I hadn't heard anybody talk about this plush palette from Sample Beauty. Actually, I don't even know that I've ever heard anybody talk about Sample Beauty. At first I was like, okay, wait, is that that crappy beauty creations or, you know, one of those dollar store brands? Um, but I don't think it is. I, I just think it's a brand that I'm not familiar with. So yay for trying new brands that you didn't know existed. I'm going to grab that same elite shade and I'm basically kind of starting in the crease. That one actually was a little bit too low. Starting in the crease and then just kind of trying to blend it into that delicate shade. All right. So I'm already feeling like maybe I think these pigments, these particular kind of like plummy colors are sometimes difficult to formulate. So it felt at first like it got a little patchy on me. We're just gonna try to build this one up here to match it a little bit more. We're, we're gradiating down, so it's fine that they're not, that I went a little lower than I wanted it to be. This is not the right brush, I think. Need to be switching brushes here. All right. I'm just gonna grab a clean, fluffy blender brush for the top of that. Just gonna kind of soften this up just a little bit. Color-wise, it's very pretty. Maybe not exactly what I thought it was gonna be in the pan, because I think it ended up a little bit more burgundy and less 
last brick than I thought it was going to be, but that's, but that's okay. I'm going to grab the next darker plum down called, I think it's called Trait Flush, huh? I'm trying to, I always try to figure out like where they got the names from. If any of them to be expected to be on the patchy side, I would really expect this one to be kind of packing on that shade and up that top edge here. Okay. That went on pretty dense actually. Now let's see what happens when I take my clean blending brush here. Oh, nope. It's going to get patchy. Full on patchville. That's disappointing. Now my eyes a little watery, so that might be part of it, but I didn't think it was that watery, that it was going to be enough to actually remove the eyeshadow. Boy, that's horribly disappointing. Okay. We're going to take a little bit more of that, pack it back on. Horribly patchy. If you don't have to, if you can just lay it down and then not blend it, that may work better. Yeah, it's, it is so, it is such a patchy mess right now. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so disappointed. That is horrible. All right. That one is, uh, we're going to, we're going to give up. We're going to abandon ship on this particular one. Uh, so that trait shade, that is not good. So we're going to take this off. The first couple shades that I used uh, on the uh, on the eye are actually, they're looking okay. So I'm going to take that one off. We're going to uh, try to doctor this up just a little bit here. And then I'm going to go back into this palette because I'm not convinced that all the shades are bad yet. Like maybe it's just that one trait shade that is not, it's giving me a little grief here. So I need, where did that eyelid primer go? Okay, we're going to put the eyelid primer back on and that was probably too much and let it sit down while I move into the other eye and let's skip that shade. <laughs> let's not use that one because that one's horrible. And if you guys are new here, please keep in mind that I am not a professional makeup artist. Probably figured that one out by now. I also like to try things just to see if they work on ladies of a certain age who are not makeup artists to see if um, they're good value and they're good, good use of our monies and you know, all the, all the things. Okay. We're going to let that eyelid primer dry down. Let's continue on with this one and see if we can't salvage it. I'm going to grab a different brush and I'm going to go into Americano, which is this darker, cool toned, almost like an espresso brown. And instead of going all over my lid, I'm going to keep it to the outside here and see how it blends in, builds up when we do smaller amounts. Uh, patchy. Okay. I'm going to try a little bit more. Maybe if I just lay it down and don't blend it, it'll be better. I'm just flipping my brush over to kind of a little bit. Hmm. I'm, I'm a little shocked actually. Okay. It, I think, I think right now it's, there's about as much as work on it as I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it alone. So I got this kind of plummy pink look on here right now, and I don't have like a really good pink shimmer in here. I do have a bronze. I have a gold because of course there's a gold shimmer in everything these days. There's like a turquoise, a dark purple, a light purple, and then kind of like a goldy green shade. I'm going to have to try this Ritzy, which is this purple shade right here. It does feel good on the finger. This is giving me a little bit of Bridgerton vibe without being the same color story. Okay. That shimmer is actually really pretty. This went in a completely different direction than I thought it was going to, but now I'm kind of glad that I tried that. That's almost like that periwinkle shade, um, very peri, except in the, like a shimmer form. I think that the mattes, I'm I'm gonna go on a limb here and say they're a little on the patchy side, so keep that in mind. Do we want to try some of these darker shades and kind of see how? brutal they really are? What do we want to do here? I mean, I can go all in and do like this whole sea foam navy blue. Well, that's what we're going to do. I just answered my own question. We've got this navy blue in here. I'm dying to see what it looks like on my eyes. Look at how different my eyes look where I've got eyeshadow on one and not on the other. How tired and small just by having the sort of neutralized eyelid primer. Power of makeup, you guys. Crazy. I feel like this might go bad. We're going to start with, um, I think it says Luscious. It's this other matte in here. It's like the mid-tone sea foam green. Lots of kick up. Not all the way inner corner, but I'm going to start with that in the beginning third or so of my eye. Then we're going to go from the lash line all the way up to the crease. Okay. Not horribly patchy, but also not trying to blend it out. Just kind of applying it right now. I'm going to swatch that brush since it seems to be working. This is a, a Morphe brush, but it's a little firmer, smaller brush. I'm going to go into the next darker shade down, which is this one right here. The first one's called Luscious. This one's called Overspending. 
I totally read that wrong. And I'm gonna go right over the top, I'm back in the third time, and I am not tapping off my brush. I'm not getting a ton of fallout underneath, but I do want that to be a little bit more opaque, so why I'm trying to get as much pigment actually applied to my lid. That one's feeling a little patchy too. All right, we're going in with a different brush here. This one's a little softer. So that last one is called Classy, this navy blue down here. I love a navy blue usually like in a lighter form. Definitely seeing uh, a little bit more fallout on that one. Again, I think it might be the brush. I'm trying to keep the shape that I want and deposit the pigment. So, so I got the colors on. I got the kind of the shape that I want. Let me grab a clean blending brush. Now let's see if we can't buff out this top edge here. If it doesn't just go full on patchy or if it's actually usable. I did not do a transition shade. I wanted the colors to kind of blend in and be their own transition shade. So I made sure to go all the way up to the top edge of that orbital bone and these are not the easiest shades to blend still kind of working on the blending here it's overkill for me too much too much shade too much saturation of pigment and i'm kind of feeling like it, it definitely wants to go patchy trying to keep it trying to keep it where it, it want i want it to be oh yeah see now i've got transfer full on under my eyes everywhere else it, this is a mess wow all right that this this these blues and greens not my first not my favorite choice here trying to clean this up a little bit and maybe bring up this line so i don't have quite so much spread with it uh, okay, I'm gonna go into this light kind of acid greeny shade here. I think it's more of a duochrome. It's called Antique. It feels very creamy. Wow, just just using a little bit. I don't know if I'll be able to show you this or not, but just lose, losing it once, I've already got a dip in there. So it feels very, very creamy, and it is adhering to the lid, so that's good. Uh, getting quite a bit of texture with that shade something to keep in mind if you do have textury eyelids grab a little bit more got a little patchy right out here kind of tap it on to sort of fill in the blanks a little hmm not sure that i would leave the house wearing that gotta be honest might as well keep going just for fun and see how some of these other shadows perform i'm gonna have to clean my brushes anyway so might as well go on i'm gonna go into this super dark rich purple royal purple shade in here called fair is that right rare the dark rich purple shade called rare and because i have so much transfer underneath from that blues and the greens i'm just gonna leave it alone and little bloodshot. I feel, I'm starting to feel like the only way I would wear this look would be Mardi Gras. Assuming I ever get to go to Mardi Gras again. Okay, I'm gonna take this lighter minty green here, lighter, lighter seafoam green called Upmarket, and that's gonna use to connect that purple corner. Crazy that highlighter got to. I do feel like I'm gonna have to have some cleanup here. I am getting kick up into my contacts. That does not bode well at all. Let me clean this up just a little bit, put some mascara on, and we'll we'll come back. All right, you guys, I know this is hard to look at when I've got, you know, when I'm a little lopsided, but that is my blue and green and purple eye look. I did end up doing a little um, black liner, a little bit more of a dramatic eye look. This one, I kept it more soft and pretty, and I prefer this one. <laughs> This one I think I could use for a variety of, of situations. Here's my, my take on this. This was not an expensive palette, um, but I I don't know that I can recommend it. I, I feel like there were some shades that were downright um, difficult to work with. I didn't use every shade in this palette, so I can't speak on that. I am curious about this kind of mauve back here. I am interested in this row of warmer neutrals here. That, no, this shade, complete junk. This one, I fought a little bit on. I think if I were gonna use this one again, it's gonna have to be just as a liner. The shimmers actually were pretty good. I've got the one and I'm just doing single swatches on it. So there's kind of like a purpley la lavender color. There's a deeper, richer purple. There's that shimmer seafoam green. I think the, sh the, the shimmery metallic shades in here, they're the winners. I think if you do a shimmer all over your lid and maybe buff out a little bit with one of the mattes, you might be able to get it to work. This, this, this palette is probably going to go into my next declutter video.
I've got too much to use to, to fight with this. This is not a win for me. So disappointed. Okay, so the Simply Beauty plush palette. Nope, can't recommend that one. The Roxy Roxaurus um, uh, contour palette. Okay, I've already got smears of stuff all over this. I, I don't mind the rose gold packaging, the reflective packaging. It's it's pretty immediately messy. I did like the way that contour worked at me, uh, worked for me. So I think that the mattes, yeah, they'll work for me. The shimmers, um, I'm not really feeling the shimmers here. Let me grab just the lightest. Um, I'm gonna grab this lightest highlighter and do we need, I might as well just keep adding, right, at this point. Okay, I mean, it, that works. Wow, that is so foiled. If you want, bam, I can see your highlighter from out of spa outer space, then maybe the highlights in here. So, which leads me to believe that four out of these eight shades are not shades I'm gonna probably ever use. That's, that's disappointing too. Makeup Revolution, you know, hit and miss. This is pretty though, I don't mind this look. This is, this, and that one's got like a whole other thing going on that looks like I almost got like punched in the eyeballs here. That's, that's not good. Okay, so out of all the stuff that I got from Beauty Bay, love the lip, love the eye base. These are a win. This, absolute win. These are a surprise win for me because I normally have to load up on the moisturizer and I didn't have to with these spray essences. I'm gonna play around with these more and see how they perform as a trio. Maybe you need to try them like individually one by one and see see how they perform on their own or if you really do need to use them as a trio and uh, try them with a variety of different foundations and see kind of how they react to them because that's actually kind of fun. If I can spritz on, okay. Some of the other stuff, you know, the, the favorites that I know, probably not gonna need to get into them right quick. This plush, the plush palette, no. So some hits, some misses, you guys. I don't know, tell me what you think about this kind of haul, try on stuff. I, I mean, sometimes you gotta try to know. Don't don't buy the plush palette. Okay, or, or if you already have it, let me know what you think. Do I need to give it another shot? I mean, I've done two looks with it and it's not like I'm the most disappointed I've ever been before, but that was way harder than it needed to be. And we don't got time for that. Okay, you guys, I hope you guys are doing really well. That's kind of like my number two beauty bay haul. It's a, a, a brand you have to order internationally. I think it took like a month to get here, but the price is really good. I think all said and done, I doubt I spent more than a hundred bucks. I try not to with some of this stuff. The Beauty Bay brand, the Beauty Bay store line, great. Make Revolution London, I don't know. You know, you get them at Ulta, but I thought, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought, I would. I think I would try this, I think when I wanted to try the skincare. Makeup Revolution palettes are not horrible. I think that this palette probably wasn't really what I wanted, so. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing really well. Stick around, go hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'd love to see you guys back around soon, sooner than later. Usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday with the occasional other stuff. If you've got requests, leave them in a comment down below. Tell me what you think about Beauty Bay. Take, tell me what you think about Makeup Revolution. And uh, if you've ever heard of Sample Beauty. I hope you guys are doing really well. And until my next video, bye for now.